Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. He's the co-founder of WordPress and the founder of Automatic. <laughs> he loves jazz. The office might have aged him a little bit, but he remains extraordinarily passionate about open source. To share with us the state of the word, please welcome Matt Mullenweg. With him on stage, I'd like to invite uh, Philadelphia Councilman David O. He is a strong advocate for the technology and creative economy sectors. Uh, he's got a killer smile, and he loves to shake hands. Please welcome Councilman O. Thank you so very much. All right. Uh, I think we have the three people with jackets now. Yes, the, the only three of us, oh, right? I think we have to be close to this for them to hear us. Okay, fantastic. Uh, yeah, the three people with jackets were up here. We found, the, all the ones we found in the whole place. Well, okay. Go ahead. Well, wonderful. Um, uh, my name is David O. I'm a councilman at large here in Philadelphia, so I represent the whole city, but more importantly, I chair our city's committee on global opportunities and the creative, innovative economy. So if you don't want to have one of those in your hometown, make sure you talk to your city council. <laughs> um, and I'm so pleased to present today a resolution recognizing December 5th as WordPress Day here in Philadelphia. So if you... Oh, good reaction. All right, so, so if you'll give me a minute, I'm gonna present this officially to Matt uh, Muhlenberg, uh, I'm sorry, Muhlenberg, and uh, give me one minute, there we go. Ooh, there we go, all right. Uh, it's tough seeing up here, so bear with me. This is a resolution, so it was passed in our city council and it recognizes and commemorates December 5th, 2015 as WordPress Day in Philadelphia. Whereas WordPress is an open source software program used to build websites. And whereas WordPress is simple enough for creating personal blogs yet powerful enough for building large multifaceted corporate sites. <laughs> it is estimated that 24% of the websites on the internet are powered by WordPress. And whereas Philadelphia will host the inaugural WordCamp US, the premier WordPress conference of the year on December 4th through 6, 2015. And whereas WordCamp US is the largest gathering of people who develop, use, and support WordPress. This conference will welcome more than 2,000 people from all across the nation and the world for these days of learning, community, and contribution to WordPress. And whereas WordCamp US will draw a diverse mix of people, designers, developers, content creators, and strategists, marketers, writers, SEO practitioners, educators, project managers, business owners, and nonprofit owners. All attendees will enable a rich mix of skills and experience, and whereas throughout the conference, sponsors from top local, national, and international businesses will be available to help attendees learn about and access their WordPress-focused business solutions. And whereas the local WordPress team worked diligently to ensure Philadelphia was chosen to host WordCamp US, the team consists of Alex Block, Liam Dempsey, Tracy Levesque, Jody Rochelle, Drew James, Ingrid Miller, Cami Chaos, Brad Williams, Doug Stewart, Reed Gustav, and Kevin Cristiano. And whereas, <laughs> as a cultural hub with an active and innovative tech creative community, Philadelphia is honored to welcome WordPress and WordCamp US to our city. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that it hereby recognizes and commemorates December 5th, 2015 as WordPress Day in Philadelphia, further resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to Matt Mullenweg, co-founder of WordPress and one of the top 10 most influential people online for changing the face of the internet <laughs> by Business Insider, evidencing the sincere admiration and respect of this legislative body. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Whereas.
guys, that was pretty dandy. <laughs> Look at that. Gee golly. We're getting fancy here. Here, let me give this to someone. Don't fold it. Well, howdy, everybody. I knew I got dressed up for a reason. <laughs> That was very fancy, and we're very excited here to present the 10th ever State of the Word. So welcome. <laughs> My name is Matt Mullenberg, and um, <laughs> you can tweet me at photomat, and our hashtag today, as you probably all know, is hash pound WCUS. Um, I love that WordCamp this year falls after Thanksgiving because I think it's a, a wonderful place to start, sort of this, this touch cornerstone of the year from a place of gratitude and thanks. Uh, some of the first thanks I want to give are, of course, the sponsors that made this possible. Jetpack, Securi, WooCommerce, and Bluehost, collectively between them, donated $275,000 to make this happen. And of course, all the other great folks. I hope you've been checking out some of the booths and sponsors. It's actually, you know, most conferences, the sponsor area is dead. And here, it's been hopping. I don't know if that's because the coffee's over there or... <laughs> also, I want all of these folks to stand up. You just heard their names, but everyone who is involved in volunteering or putting together this event, can you please just stand up really quick? Let's give a round of applause for those folks. Look around. You know, some people did not want it to be in Philadelphia. Can you believe that? But they promised jazz, they promised barbecue, they promised no snow. <laughs> All of these things have been true. Actually, the weather's been amazing, hasn't it? Like the rain stopped before we got here. It was like the, the brightness of all y'all's smiles, like cheered it up and drove away all the clouds. It's been a really beautiful couple of days. You said it would be chilly, but not snowy. And that was actually exactly what it's been. Plus those beanies, who's got one of those hats? Those are the coolest hats. That's definitely some of the cooler WordPress swag I've gotten. Also in terms of coming from a place of gratitude and thanks, I want to take a moment to recognize two members of the WordPress community, uh, both of who have either been on stage or highlighted on stage, who passed this year. And that is Alex King, who was a lead developer of WordPress, and Kim Barcel, who is a key community member. So I'd like you all to join me for a moment uh, to take a moment of silence to reflect on their contributions, their part of the community and what they brought to the world, and also anyone else who you have in your thoughts. So just a moment. Thank you. I think that would mean a lot to them. In terms of looking back, like I said, past few work camps, this is our 10th one. Actually, I don't know if you all know this, but this is the largest work camp ever in the world. <laughs> you are part of history here, and I think it'll be the largest until we break it next year, right? I, how much was the final ticket? It's about 1,700 sold. 1801? Did you buy like 10 at the end just to get it on a one? <laughs> and the last I saw, how many live streams? There are at least 700 there. Pulling out the phone. Hundreds and hundreds of people watching on live stream. Um, WordCamp started very modestly, as some of y'all remember. This was the very first one in the Swedish American Music Hall. It did have barbecue and jazz. <laughs> and about, it was put with about a month of notice, and ended up having 500 registrations. Uh, so it was a very kind of last minute that came together. I thought I would juxtapose, juxtapose, <laughs> juxtapose <laughs> each of the uh, word camps with the version of WordPress at the time. So when we did the first word camp, this is what WordPress looked like. If any of y'all remember that. Navigation at the top, that was WordPress 2.0. The next one was also there. WordPress 2.1 looked exactly the same. 2008, we moved for the first time to uh, Mission Bay, where WordCamp San Francisco has been for the past 
well, six years now. So we really started to fill it out. Uh, and WordPress, who remembers this redesign? That was before the crazy horse, which came next, 2.7. It's amazing how far WordPress has come, 2.9. Uh, this was, if you look closely, you might see yourselves. This was the, I think, sixth, seventh WordCamp. We did the big redesign. I think in 2012, we did some sort of jam there. <laughs> I'm not sure what was going on. But we also brought the guide into the core WordPress. 3.6, we brought in the mobile redesign. And then finally, with last year, the MP6. Uh, each WordCamp had something special about it that, uh, that it cured that year, or that was introduced into the world from the first time we started talking about WordPress as an app platform, or WordPress APIs, or even the first time we started to show people using WordPress as a CMS and not just as a blog. Now, all of these stories and more have been collected. And what I want to make is the first announcement of today. We actually have a ton of stuff to announce today. Um, you might have heard that we were working on a book on WordPress. And I'm proud to announce that this Friday, so December 11th, the book Milestones, the story of WordPress, will be released officially. So. It's a, it's a work of a lot of people together. Also, Siobhan did an incredible number of interviews, over 53 hours of interviews with people in the WordPress community, including Alex King, um, that are all online. So you can go directly to some of the interviews and read the transcriptions. And we've got the summary of this book. Now, we're approaching this book a lot like we do uh, WordPress, much like you saw WordPress change over the years. Um, this is the first iteration. It ends a little bit abruptly, right around MP6. So think of this as version 0.5 of the book. And we hope to release many versions in the future as we continue to write it together. Now, I said this was the largest WordCamp. But, and since this is the 10th anniversary of WordCamps, I wanted to highlight a few of the different stats from around it. This year, in 2015, there will be 89 camps, 21,000 attendees across 34 countries. Yeah. <laughs> You know these don't happen just by themselves. There were actually 601 unique organizers across all of those 89 camps, of which 60% were doing it for the very first time. I don't know if that means that once you do it once, you never want to do it again, or? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what, the, what that stat means, but I think it's also that we're getting a lot, and maybe even next year will be the first year we break 100 work camps in a year, or about two a week. There were also, we ran some stats and found that there were 1.6 thousand unique speakers across all those camps, and 2.1 thousand sessions, or 2,100 sessions. Um, so these stats were kind of amazing, but actually what blew me away were that meetups beat it. So meetups, in the past year, we've had 40,000 people attend 2,000 meetups. So almost double the number that have attended all the work camps in the world in the past year. So meetups have really been blowing up. And if there is not one yet, and wherever you traveled from, uh, give it some thought. Actually, who traveled the furthest here today? Can't say New York. That was like an hour train ride. <laughs> you want to come super far? Back there? What do you think? Bangkok. Bangkok. That's pretty far. <laughs> Anyone further into Thailand? Romania? I don't know if that's further. <laughs> What's that? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. That's like, that's, that's way too nice. <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> I think you went the wrong direction. We should have all gone to you. <laughs> you can put in a proposal for 2017. Uh, I've always said that technology is at its very best when it brings people together. And I think the WordCamp program and now meetups happening on a more monthly cadence have really started to show introduce people to the amazing community around WordPress. Because when you break it down, yes, our total numbers are very large, but Really, what makes WordPress run is a surprisingly few number of people, some of whom we're going to highlight today. Now, a lot of the improvements over the past year that we wanted to celebrate are actually part of the combination of both the core WordPress and WordPress.org, our favorite community website that brings us all together and has had lots of uh, improvements over the past year. One thing, an update from last year that we talked about, and we actually did, as opposed to the updates that we talked about and didn't do, which I'll skip over. <laughs> As we move from, uh, to more activity-based metrics on all of our directories, so for example, the theme directory and the plugin directory now, instead of telling you how many downloads something has, 
which is a little bit of a vanity metric, doesn't actually mean something, shows you how many active installs. So these are actually active uh, systems of WordPress coming in through our update system. Um, so we can show that now. So this one has over a million. We adopted Slack. This was a, sort of a surprise from last year, and it's been, um, it's been kind of amazing. There's been over two million messages sent on our Slack in the past year. And in fact, I believe there's no official thing, but I think we're one of the sl largest Slack instances in the entire world in terms of number of members. So uh, I know this adoption of Slack has been to the detriment of many people's productivity, <laughs> but we have been able to use it uh, quite a bit. To, it's been the meetings, WordCamp US had some organization there. It's been really cool to see people brought together by sort of a richer tool than the IRC that we passed. Who's had a little bit of FOMO because they missed some sessions the past two days, right? That's the worst thing about WordCamps is when there's two things that you want to see going on at once. They will all be on WordCamp TV, or WordPress TV, sorry. Um, although I think if you type in WordCamp TV, we also have that, I hope. If not, someone register it really quick. <laughs> someone who's not a spammer. <laughs> um, we ended up open sourcing all the code behind WordPress TV. This is a, a step along what we hope to do with all of the WordPress.org sites, um, putting it up on public repositories. And we're initiating a redesign and everything that not only will the community be able to participate in, but actually change some of the code. If you find a browser bug, you can patch the CSS and put it right up there. And then one of the most important things is that we localize the plugin and theme directories. Those of you in the back who might not be able to see, this is the Spanish uh, Rosetta site, so es.wordpress.org, and actually showing, in this case, BuddyPress and Jetpack. Uh, it's jetpackpoorwordpress.com. I'm not even going to try to read the rest. <laughs> but um, this is really important because, as we've talked about before, you know, last year was the year that non English downloads of WordPress passed up the English downloads for the first time, which I said was an important milestone in our history because, as you probably know, uh, billions of more people speak not English than English in the world. <laughs> and if we're going to democratize publishing all around the world, it's very important for us to reach them. But without the plugins and theme experience in there, I mean, think about your WordPress experience. Um, you probably run at least, at least Hello Dolly, right? <laughs> at least one plugin. Uh, and in fact, many people have uh, anywhere from five to 15 plugins. So, but in another language, if you were to start and you only spoke Spanish, for example, you would load up and you'd see a bunch of plugins and themes in English, which was not a great experience. And in fact, the little mini announcement is that all themes and plugins now support language packs. We've loaded in every single theme, and if you're a plugin developer, on your next commit, it will get loaded in the translate.wordpress.org to be available to be translated for the entire world. So, yeah. Oh, y'all are switching out. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Good. We're, this is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> also, a very exciting announcement is that the plugin directory crossed one billion downloads. <laughs> and in the past year, we added 9,000 new plugins to the repository, which is actually a pretty significant amount of growth. Um, as I said, we're moving away from downloads, but this does show um, just sort of the activity that's going on and how vibrant uh, the plugin ecosystem is for WordPress and one of the key things. Final big milestone, y'all probably heard, but we passed 25% of websites. All right. <laughs> As I said in the blog post and in the side slide, that means that we have 75 to go. <laughs> This is not a, a chance to rest on our laurels, but I think a demonstration that the web and the world really wants an open source, open, free solution uh, for the web. And as WordPress evolves more and more from being just an application to being almost more like an operating system for the open web, I think it's been a very exciting year. Driven, in fact, by some pretty cool releases. So you all know WordPress 4.1, named for Dina Washington, in honor of Dina Washington, included a 2015 theme. Cool note about 2015 is actually the most popular WordPress theme of all time, with 1.6 million active sites. So good job on 2015. <laughs> it dwarfs all the other 20s, even. <laughs> we had distraction free writing, and of course, language selection, going on our, our mission and goal of trying to internationalize WordPress to make it available in more countries. 
4.2 was named in honor of Bud Powell, which included a brand new press this, themes and customizer, and my personal favorite, can we give it up for emoji? <laughs> of course, the emoji was just a cover for supporting multi-byte languages that the majority of the world speaks and writes in. <laughs> so we brought that in there as well, but uh, the emoji are pretty fun. Uh, and then, oh, finally 4.2, named for Billy Holiday. Uh, menus and customizers, site icons, and formatting short codes. Each of these releases were led by a different person on a new rotating lease, uh, and I believe they're all here. If John, Constantine, and Drew can all stand up. Give you a round of applause for your hard work. <laughs> Leading a release is not easy, as any of these uh, folks who have done it can attest. Uh, you definitely get a few gray hairs. I didn't see you yet, Constantine, but probably soon. And um, <laughs> as you know, one of the key differentiators of WordPress's philosophy, especially in contrast to some of our open source compatriots like Drupal or Joomla, is we keep a fast version release cycle. Uh, we've done three a year now for several years, and we found that this is a pretty good cadence with the way that updates and everything currently work for getting improvements out to y'all as fast as possible, keeping a steady sort of train of releases so there's not too much pressure for anything to get in one particular release. You know, if, there's, if we miss one, there's another one right around the corner. Giving lots of different op people opportunity to lead and sort of make their mark or their sort, of their sort of philosophy of what a WordPress release can be. And just uh, keep things moving, you know? I, I know that but version updates are a complaint. And in fact, version fragmentation is one of the big struggles that we've had to deal with in the WordPress world. Uh, much like in this matter right now, we're a little bit more like Android than iOS in terms of there's lots of different versions of WordPress out in there in the world. So I want to tell you a brief story about how one host has tried to address this. And this comes from Bluehost. So Bluehost hosts over 2 million WordPresses across many thousands of servers. And around August of this year, actually, just a few months ago, they uh, noticed something bad. So you see that red there? So about 80% or 1.6 million of their WordPresses were not on the latest version. Sad Christmas. <laughs> There's an emoji for that. Um, WordPress is very easy to install, but a lot of people, it's so, you know, once they get it going, they might not think to come back and see the end dashboard not notices. And we only do auto updates in the majority of hosts for minor versions. So what Bluehost ended up doing is they wrote a scanner that went through all of the two million plus of their sites, including ones that some customers had forgotten about. They might be in a different directory that was a staging directory or backup. And they did a backup, they performed an upgrade all the way to the latest, which at the time was version 4.2. And then they did a scan, like looking for white screens or anything. And if there were any problems, they would immediately roll it back. Once the system was in place, they got to essentially 99% plus of their sites on the latest version. And then when 4.3 came out, they were able to do 2.6 million core, plugin, and theme updates within a few days of the release. Pretty amazing. Now, a lot of people who I talk to this about are like, okay, but then what happened? 0.006% of the updated sites contacted support. So testament to how much work we put into the uh, upgrades. And in fact, ongoing support for those WordPress sites was down 18%. A lot of that coming from fewer sites getting hacked. So this is actually pretty amazing, and I think a great example for every single host, no matter what your size, to get everyone on the very, very latest. They're currently working on PHP, but it turns out that that's a lot harder. Although I do have a cool stat today, it's not from Bluehost, but the usage of, as of today, the usage of PHP 7 has passed PHP, was it 4.3? Yeah, so PHP 7 now has more users than version 4.3, which is pretty cool. Yay. <laughs> Many hosts actually turn on our major release auto updates. So what this is, is it's a graph of the growth and the decay of the major versions of WordPress. And what you notice is those dots are actually getting closer together. We're not going to quite hit it by the time 4.4 comes out, um, but we're at like 48 point something or 49% of all WordPresses in the entire world are on the latest major release, 4.3. And this is the work of 
the update system host and many of y'all as well, uh, making sure that you're all your sites and of course the sites of the people uh, you care about and not the sites of your enemies are upgraded and on, the <laughs> and on the latest and greatest version. As you might know, uh, version 4.4 of WordPress is right around the corner. In fact, it is shipping Tuesday. <laughs> Now we have to hit the day. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about version 4.4, I'd like to invite a special guest on the stage, and that is Mr. Scott Taylor. So a round of applause for Scott. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Thank you. Uh, leading WordPress 4.4 was a pretty exciting experience. Um, we put a lot of work into really transitioning WordPress um, into the modern era. There's still a lot of work to go, but um, I think we made a lot of good headway. Uh, in WordPress 4.4, we had over 2,000 commits. Uh, that's not just me, that's a great team of committers and bug gardeners. Uh, what was really cool, though, is we had over 400 contributors. So we spent a lot of time going back through track and finding tickets that maybe we're fixed four years ago, but got neglected for some reason. We tried to find as much of that as possible um, and put that stuff in and recognize the contributors who've been around and per were perhaps feeling uh, disenfranchised because we hadn't seen their stuff in a while. Um, WordPress 4.4 has a lot of little fixes in it. Um, we did some cool things with comments um, around performance and kind of modernizing that API. We've added some new objects like WP comment, WP term, and WP network. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more stuff coming up in future releases around uh, multi-site and really hardening that experience. Um, and we did little things like, uh, it used to be that you'd only get a nice URL for an attachment if it was attached to a post. Uh, that works for unattached attachments now. That ticket number was below the number 2,000. I think it was like 17, 18 or something. So we went way back to try to find things to work on. Uh, an exciting thing for a lot of people is the phase one or scaffolding of the REST API. Um, this is, Yep, thank you. Uh, this is a long time coming, and uh, this excites me. There, I, there's going to be a future release that's going to contain a lot of endpoints, but for people who want to kind of modernize the way they expose data on their sites, um, this is going to be a really cool thing. We're already using it on a little site called the New York Times. Um, this, this is our live coverage platform, and that was a strategically picked picture. But uh, yeah, the REST API is great. It's, it's, it's an alternative uh, to what many consider an obsolete technology called XML RPC. Uh, I was at a previous company and had to expose some data to iOS and Android developers, and they were not too keen on figuring out what XML RPC was. But uh, speaking JSON is a much uh, more friendly thing uh, when exposing or having people consume your data. Um, yeah, and so the REST API, we can now start creating arbitrary endpoints, and uh, it gives WordPress some of this web service um, sugar. There's a new default theme for WordPress, uh, which is 2016. I like it because it has a uh, mobile-first approach and very good uh, responsive design. So as you can see on different screens, it actually like, looks really great. I love the uh, phone design. We brought responsive images, uh, which is actually a... <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Wasn't me. There's a great team of people who worked on uh, responsive images in a feature plugin, and I think it uh, validated our feature plugin approach. And um, it was a really solid group of people that made this happen, and it's a great step forward for the web. When WordPress adopts modern technologies, the internet adopts modern technologies. And um, for, the, for those who don't know what this is, um, it allows you to specify a set of images instead of just one and it lets the browser figure out which image to load. This is good if you have something that uh, has rich photography, and you may have a huge image for desktop, but on an iPhone that has a 320 pixel width, it would be better to load something much smaller. So it's, it's gonna be great for bandwidth in, um, in some sense. It's also, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers in 3.5 when we tried to do retina. Uh, this allows us to move forward and uh, provide retina images for um, every crop we have. It may require some uh, massaging, but I think pretty soon we're going to come up with a solution, maybe in a plugin, that allows sites to be full of, fully retina um, out of the box. Uh, another piece was term meta. Um, at the beginning of the release, 
We put out a call for features. Um, I asked what people wanted to see in WordPress 4.4. This was not high on my list, but it was extremely high on the community's list. Uh, and this is also part of our taxonomy roadmap. So it was very cool that we were able to shepherd in term meta. There's a lot of people who have been happy with that. Uh, Another feature, uh, which we call, I guess, O-Embed for WordPress or WordPress Embeds, it's been a long time that you can take a YouTube URL and paste it into your content, and when you view it on the front end, you magically see a YouTube embed. Well, the same thing works for your WordPress install now. Um, if I have WordPress 4.4 and somebody pastes my URL into another WordPress blog, you actually get a nice preview um, of that post on the other blog. Um, your WordPress site becomes an O-Embed provider, and uh, you get these rich previews, and there's also embed code um, that makes it, if you don't have a WordPress um, install, you can copy the HTML embed and paste it somewhere else and get the same um, rich preview of that content. So that is WordPress 4.4. Uh, Tuesday is our goal. I think we're going to make it. Uh, it's been a great experience. I won't be too sad when it's done. It's been kind of a, it, it, it's been intense. But uh, <laughs> It was fun, and now I know what it's like to lead the release, and I was uh, very proud to do so. So, thank you. Are you all excited about 4.4? We have chosen new victims, I mean leads, for the next three releases that I'd actually like to take right now to announce. So version 4.5 is going to be led by Mike Schroeder. Version 4.6, this. 4.6 by Dominic Schilling. And 4.7, we'll just skip. Uh, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to leading release again. It's, it'll be my first since 3.8. <laughs> All in all, over the past year, we've had 802 contributors. It's pretty amazing. And as you might know, in the past year, a few more folks I wanted to highlight were some of the committers that joined. So thus far, uh, you know, Constantin, Ella, Weston, Andrea, and Ryan, and Tammy got commit. And we are announcing seven more people who are receiving commit. It'll be Michael, Aristotle, Pascal, Rachel, Joe, Mike, Mel, and Eric. Please stand up, because I think you're all here. <laughs> you now all have commits. Please don't break the internet. <laughs> or at least my site, because I update the trunk every morning. So <laughs> you're more likely to break me before other people. One other final development thing that I think was kind of cool I wanted to highlight was we've had a lot of growth in the attention paid to accessibility in the WordPress development process in particular. And in, yeah, in the past year, we've had 205 accessibility tickets completed, which is almost double what we did before then. And I want to thank especially Rian and Andrea for working a lot on this. I did, some of you, by the way, follow my blog, ma.tt. Um, I did a call a couple of weeks ago asking what were some of the coolest things that you've seen with the REST API and got some really incredible comments, including this one that I actually wanted to read. I cannot believe the gold mine that WP API represents. Having built hundreds of apps professionally and managed many high-end clients, there is no better, simpler way to create a mobile stack, period. That's actually put an exclamation point. You said it's an exclamation point. <laughs> it's the code equivalent of graphene. <laughs> Now, this blew me away. Who knows what graphene is? It's going to save the world, basically. It's like this single carbon thing that makes batteries better, everything stronger. Um, so I don't know if the REST API is graphene, but it might be graphene for 25% of the internet. So I want to share with you the little robots back. <laughs> I want to share with you four stories about the REST API uh, that came up that I thought were kind of cool that will show, uh, for those of you who haven't checked it out yet, some of what's possible. The first comes actually from Microsoft, which is not historically known for its embrace of open source. But over the past several years, and especially under the new CEO, Satya, has done some amazing support of open source, both through their Azure platform and using WordPress. So uh, they have this product called Microsoft Dynamics 
AX. Now, you're probably wondering what Microsoft Dynamics AX is. It's an ERP solution that can increase your speed of doing business, deliver amazing customer experiences, work smarter with connected operations, and drive business performance. Now, you're probably wondering what Microsoft Dynamics AX is. <laughs> This is directly from their website, by the way. I spent like half an hour on there. I have no idea. <laughs> but to be honest, I don't even know. Like, ERP has never made sense to me. <laughs> Enterprise, resource, what, what? I don't know. But what is kind of cool is how they were using WordPress. And this was driven by um, Web Dev Studios. So what's going on here is apparently through some part of this Microsoft Dynamics AX thing, um, XP, the <laughs> There are, there's like wiki sites. So what they have is a ton of content being created. So that's what's on your left there. And actually 29 languages. And so they have people all over the world uh, creating hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of essentially pages that go into what, what I can tell looks like a wiki type system. Um, translated and sort of managed like that, like a translation manager. And then that goes to the REST API and then talks to Microsoft Dynamics, which is able to bring it in and display it inside of their application essentially, which I thought was interesting. And someday I'll figure out how to use it. Another one that I understood a little bit better comes from Human Made, which was the Nomad base. Uh, and actually, a lot of y'all are already on this, so, because when I signed up, I saw tons of people. So basically, Nomad base is a tool for digital nomads or people who travel a lot. And what it does is it can pull in you know, your so different social networks, including Swarm or Foursquare, and kind of show where people are all over the world and slow where people show where people are going. So you can see, like in this particular city, um, Costa Rica, you know, okay, I have some friends there, I can head down there. And, um, or hopefully tell if someone's in the same city, which I thought was pretty cool. So this is all uh, React, correct? So it's a React front end, and combined with Google Maps, showing a really cool, oh, there you are, is it React? Mapbox and React, got it. Um, showing basically an entirely JavaScript front end that's talking to WordPress on the back end. So when you register, when you store everything, it's all going into the WordPress database. Final one, which I thought was pretty cool, or next to final one, is uh, StoryCore. Uh, you might have heard of this from uh, NPR. Has anyone ever heard of StoryCore story? They're pretty amazing, right? I'm also glad of the number of NPR listeners we have in this room. <laughs> this is a good crowd. <laughs> So StoryCorps is an independent nonprofit whose project is to honor and celebrate the lives of everyday Americans by listening to the stories. And they have this NPR show. They do like an official thing that they do. But uh, they got actually a TED Prize grant and a Knight Foundation grant to expand it. So they worked with TinUp. Uh, you know, we have a lot of TinUppers here. To create this thing called StoryCorps.me. So what StoryCorps.me is, is an application, actually. So you can download it and interview someone, story core style. You gotta get your NPR voice going, but it doesn't add that, I don't think. That can be a feature for the next version. Um, and record it, and what it actually does is both the website front end and the iOS app talk to the JSON REST API. So they're able to use the REST API with something that's not even on the web. It's this app that you see right there. Um, this is actually really, really cool. So it opens up this idea of StoryCorps, it democratizes it. It opens up to everyone who wants to contribute. And in fact, around Thanksgiving this year, StoryCorps was featured on the homepage and linked from the homepage of Google, saying, grandparents have the best stories. Record your grandparents' story this Thanksgiving. So for those who are wondering if the REST API and WordPress can scale, only high enough to be linked from the homepage of Google. <laughs> <laughs> Any more than that, you're on your own. So if you're bigger than Google, submit a patch. <laughs> Smaller than Google, you're OK. For Actually, it was fun because every year when I put together State of the Word, which, by the way, is the work of many, many people coming together, um, I just get up here and talk, uh, looking at the old ones and things we've talked about in prior years. So I actually have a little bit of a throwback to some old slides that you might rec recognize. Um, from talking about sort of the three stages of WordPress, where the first couple of years of WordPress, coming out of B2, we were really focused on being a blogging system. And often WordPress is embedded, 
often in an iframe in like a larger website. So be part of a bigger thing. Uh, then WordPress evolved with things like themes, pages, custom post types to be more of a full CMS. So now all of a sudden, instead of WordPress plugging into other things, everything else was plugging into WordPress. Had, so WordPress kind of ran your whole domain and everything else fit into it. And then finally, what we started seeing the first glimmers of kind of in 2012, and it's really hit its full stride this year, as I hope some of these things I showed uh, demonstrate, is WordPress as an application platform. So this is, again, people using WordPress, sometimes to build entire other things on top of. And I actually did a whole different, better view of it, so showing like the different Lego blocks of how things plug in. So there's full applications. If you look at like a Yoast or a WooCommerce or some of these other things, they're just as big and deep and complex as WordPress itself. But they're built on, on WordPress as both taking advantage of all the primitives that WordPress provides around user authentication, updates, everything that we do well. And more and more things are being built on top of this every single day, whether that's StoryCorps, Nomad Base, Microsoft Dynamics. <laughs> but thus far, there hadn't been something that sort of did WordPress itself. So there was no WordPress built on an API. So they say that uh, the best way to predict the future is to create it. <laughs> and so after, <laughs> after talking about it for a few years, uh, we decided, as many of you all know, last Monday, Automatic released a project called Calypso. Who's checked out Calypso so far? Oh, cool. So for the folks who haven't, uh, including some who might be on the internet right now, uh, Calypso is basically the idea that what would it look like if we designed WP Admin or the WordPress interface completely from scratch? Literally started, said there was no legacy, no backwards compatibility, no anything. What would it do and what would it look like? Uh, what we released last week, well, I'll get to that. So the first thing we decided is that it would be in 100% JavaScript, leveraging React. So instead of having PHP creating HTML and delivering pages, talking to a database, uh, we decided to go a complete sort of JavaScript solution, talking only to APIs. Uh, of course, it would be fully responsive. So you can see that actually at every single size, the Calypso interface is completely not only fully functional, but fluid and fluent. And at the smallest size, which you're looking at now, it becomes an actual template, sort of almost like a roadmap for what we want our uh, native iOS and Android apps to look and work like, all the way down to the pixels in the design. We thought it would be social, so including notifications, stats, likes, etc. Natively multi-sites, so that all of your sites would be under one interface rather than you having to go between many different dashboards. And then finally, that it would work both with .com and .org sites through Jetpack. So basically the idea that no matter where the site was hosted in the world, it was completely fluid. And in fact, here is a, this is in Calypso, but it's showing plugins being managed. And in fact, in this particular screen, you can turn on auto updates so that you never need to update a plugin ever again. It will always update. So there are a few interesting things in this process. First, and one that for any of you who were in Nikolai's session earlier, we had dozens and dozens of PHP-only developers became world-class in JavaScript, which I didn't, wasn't sure that could happen. <laughs> because for many years, one of the things that slowed down certain parts of WordPress was a lack of participation of JavaScript developers, where you've probably noticed that actually many of the major features of WordPress over the past few years, even all the way going back to media, the majority of code in these has been JavaScript not PHP. So it's been a while now that JavaScript has been the language that's been really moving WordPress forward. This was just kind of deciding to go the other direction, saying, you know, what would it take? So this ended up being uh, last week, last Monday, we released this both as a desktop download, so you can run this. Because it only talks to APIs, you can run it on the client side. So we created a Mac app for download, uh, Windows and Linux coming soon. Uh, released it. It's had over 50,000 downloads already, so a lot of people using it. Um, it was the work of over 140 people committing over 26,000 commits um, in about a year and a half. So a ton, a ton of work. I understand why no one did this before. <laughs> it turns out catching up to 14 years of WP admin progress was really, really hard. Actually, it might have been a similar number of commits, <laughs> just over a shorter time frame. Uh, but also learned a ton in terms of both being able to change some of the interfaces, uh, taking a completely new approach to the architecture of how a client for WordPress could work, and um, just, again, like I said, learning JavaScript. Now, it's a version 1.0. 
And like many versions, like WordPress 1.0, um, it's very, very early days. Did anyone use WordPress 1 that was here in the room? We got a couple. It's hard, I feel like such an old man saying this. I look like an old man too, but <laughs> WordPress 1 had no plugins. WordPress 1.0 had no themes. It was just kind of the basics. And that's where something like Calypso is today. And it's also important to note, uh, contrary to some of the press that was talked about, that PHP is not going away. Uh, yes. <laughs> but I believe uh, quite strongly that JavaScript and API-driven interfaces are the future, not just of WordPress, but of the web. I believe this as much as I know that barbecue is delicious, which is pretty darn strong. Uh, this approach, when you decouple the data from the interface, um, when you take a, we ended up choosing React, but many other libraries are great. When you take this sort of decoupled approach, it allows you to iterate a lot faster, allows you to create interfaces that are essentially instant. One very cool thing about Calypso is, well, out of the box, even on an uncached page, it loads about 300 milliseconds faster than WP Admin. But when the cache is in effect, like when you're on the desktop, it's actually 14 times faster. So many pages can render in only 50 or 60 milliseconds. So this is like a 10x improvement on what's come before. And you know, any of you who are at Nason's talk know what reverence that we have in the WordPress community for backwards compatibility. Uh, but one of the things that I think as people start to look at what's been done with Clipso in this approach, and this is part of the reason why we open sourced every single line of it, is that perhaps there could be a future, especially as we start to get more API in WordPress, where there might be something on the other side that's worth breaking some backwards compatibility for. Also, as we bring APIs into WordPress, I truly believe that APIs are the key to the open web. What I mean by this is if you look around, we're in some ways at a nadir of the open web. Uh, more and more, even when companies open an API, uh, they put restrictions around it. So, for example, Uber now is an API that if you have an app, you can click a button to call an Uber car, which is kind of awesome. I love Uber, it's super handy. But in the terms of service for using this, they say you cannot show the buttons for any competitors there. So you can't have a call a Lyft button next to the call a Uber button. That's great for Uber, but what about the rest of us? We just want to ride, we want to get someplace. And companies enforcing these sort of terms of service, even around when they have APIs, are making the web a less open and integrated place. Who is driven crazy when they click on an address in their iPhone and it opens Apple Maps? Right? <laughs> maps are the worst. <laughs> but Google Maps is amazing. Why is that not the default? Look at what happened with Twitter. You know, which many of us here in this room, including myself, love. Their APIs got more and more closed off, and people that were built on them either had their businesses put out of it, the clients you know, token limited, or essentially hit a wall where they found that you know, what they were previously promised as a developer building on what seemed to be an open API was actually not. In many ways, this reminds me of the very early days of WordPress, when uh, there's an amazing post by a fellow named Mark Pilgrim called Freedom Zero. What it was is, again, this is WordPress history, but at the time when WordPress started, it was very, 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 very small. In fact, when WordPress launched, the biggest criticism was that the world already had too many blogging systems. Turns out they were wrong, but, <laughs> but it looked that way. And on the self-hosted space, there was one called Movable Type, which had like 95% market share. It was utterly dominant. All the cool kids used it. It was really good. And um, it's actually what I had my first blog on. Uh, movable type had the code when you downloaded it, it was Perl, and you, you got the source code, but was not actually open source. And uh, when they released their 3.0 version, they decided to change the license. And so they switched license from being something that you could run lots of sites on to charging per site, and they changed some of the terms. Um, there was a famous blogger at the time whose site is gone, so we need to put an archive or copy of this post up because it was really good. Mark Pilgrim wrote something called Freedom Zero. And he said that he said a lot of good things, one of which is that the, f the utility of all non-free software approaches zero in the long term, which I do believe. He also said that it wasn't about, many people were up in arms about the price. And in fact, for him to upgrade to this version 3.0 of WordPress, or sorry, of movable type, he would have had to pay $535. So going from something tens of dollars to $535. Uh, 
Freedom zero, of course, for those of you familiar with the ZPL, GPL, is the freedom to use the software for any purpose. It means there are no restrictions on it. So what he actually did is he said, it's not about price, it's about freedom. And he took his $535 and donated it to WordPress and said, never again will I be fooled by something that seems kind of open, but actually isn't. That seems like I can see the code and hack on it and change it. It's open enough. But in reality, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to someone else because I don't have the Bill of Rights. I don't have the freedoms given by the open source license, the four freedoms that each of us have using WordPress and any GPL software. Uh, this set off a firestorm and, and in many ways a renaissance of the open web. As people started to, if you looked at the companies at the time, it's commonly called Web 2.0, every company, including Twitter, Technorati, lots of things, um, had these extremely open APIs and they all worked together. You said it, when WordPress adopts modern technologies, 25% of the web adopts modern technologies. I think that we can use this opening up and this development, and especially switching to an API-driven development, to actually open up more of the web. And when you think about what, an open, what open source looks like, when the actual code being available isn't the most important thing, when we're using, interacting with things on our watches and our devices and our mobile and everything, the APIs become just as important as the code itself being open. So this is something I'd like everyone to consider and work on because I think we have a, a very exciting year ahead of us, uh, perhaps trying to make the web a more open place. There's a few other things that are exciting that are coming this year that I wanted to highlight. Some of that, actually like a lot of it happened like day before yesterday. Um, well, how did that guy get there? <laughs> A project from EFF, um, supported by many people, including Facebook, Automatic, et cetera, um, called Let's Encrypt, is making it easy and free for everyone, every site in the world, to have an SSL certificate. Uh, this is awesome. You probably have thought about this before if you have an e-commerce store or something like this. But another advantage of uh, mass adoption of SSL is it makes mass surveillance of the web a lot harder to do. Uh, I think that over the next year, now that LexaCrypt is now out of beta, so you can now request a new certificate from your command line and install it, it's 100% free, we can start to drive uh, the web, and certainly the part of it that runs WordPress, to be much, much more secure than it has in the past. Another present we got this week, which is kind of amazing, is PHP 7 came out. Who saw this? We don't always talk about it a ton, but so much of the success of WordPress is due to the technologies that we were built on, including PHP. And like I said, PHP is not going away. PHP 7 is the most significant update to, Word, to PHP since WordPress started, actually. Um, you know, there has been some version fragmentation in the PHP world. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of it's because new versions of PHP haven't provided compelling enough reasons for people to want to upgrade. PHP 7 changes all of that giving a big improvement in the area that many of us care about, which is performance. Uh, for many applications, PHP 7 can be twice as fast as its predecessors. So for free, a lot of the web, as it upgrades to PHP 7, is essentially going to double in speed, which is awesome, especially as we do more and more API calls. <laughs> So check this out. It's early days. A lot of the extensions haven't been ported yet, so your web host probably isn't going to adopt it right away. Uh, but WordPress works great with it. In fact, WordPress was one of the things that the PHP t developers targeted. And they did some really heroic and amazing engineering to get this out. So essentially, it's code compatible, and it's twice as fast. So one more round of applause for PHP. It's <laughs> Something important in this coming year is that we're going to work on getting all the top plugins and themes available in every language. Now, I cheated a little bit on that screenshot we showed you earlier, where we showed the Spanish plugin directory. If you actually go to es.wordpress.org slash plugins, you will see that the top two are translated, but the bottom four are not. <laughs> That's why we only had the top two in the screenshot. <laughs> we just ran out of space. That was it, you know. Um, there's been fewer than 100 plugins and themes. If you don't count Australian English, Canadian English, British English, if you don't count those as translations, um, 
There's fewer than 100 plugin and theme, respectively, that have been translated into more, a couple, more than a couple of languages. So as we both invest in the Glot Press, which is our translation management software, and recruit more people to be at translate.wordpress.org, including many of you here in this audience, I know are bi or trilingual, and there's you know, many people watching this around the world or in videos. Uh, the translation of WordPress is, I think, going to open it up to audiences all over the world. We've seen this in small pockets where there's been a bilingual, thank you, a bilingual, strong bilingual population or strong evangelists in the country like we've had in Japan or Brazil. But we can get ahead of the web in many places as people start to come online for the first time or start to get tablets that really work great. Um, now that WordPress is fully responsive, now that we're getting these beta, better native client advantages, I think there's an incredible opportunity to actually fulfill our vision, which is democratizing the web. So if any of you speak another language, language or know anyone who does, uh, bring them over. <laughs> We need as many people as possible on translate.wordpress.org, and we are working vigorously on improving the tools there as well. Uh, I heard there's about 24 million translations so far, but there's, don't get scared by that number. <laughs> but basically, there's a lot of strings that we need to get to, and I think that we can get to a point by this time next year where at least for the top 100 plugins and themes that they're fully translated. I think this will, again, imagine using WordPress with no plugins. That's the experience that people in other countries get. I talked about this a little bit before, but I really do believe the future of interfaces in the web is JavaScript interfaces with PHP APIs. Um, this is also, I think, going to be a very interesting way for people to start building plugins for WordPress or evolving their existing plugins. So with WordPress 4.4, as Scott beautifully demonstrated, we're getting the scaffolding for the REST API in, which means that plugins can register their own endpoints and start to think about, especially the more advanced ones that have pretty, pretty complex and advanced interfaces. You can essentially start to build something like Calypso or a single page app inside of WP Admin. So think about taking you know, the, all the screen refreshes and reloads and the, all the PHP files that are currently powering some of your admin pages and turning that into something that's maybe React and JavaScript powered talking to endpoints that you register with your plugin. Uh, this is, I think, also going to set us up pretty well if we do end up going in a full JavaScript client API direction in the future, which could be pretty exciting, um, for plugins to be able to come along for the ride. So who's a plugin developer here? Whoa, we've got a lot of developers here. Um, give this some thought. Customization, it's gonna be extremely important. We already have a single page web app, as Weston told me, <laughs> inside of WordPress, and that's the customizer. If you watch user tests, if you look at funnels, if you look at where people fall off, customization is the single biggest opportunity for improving the WordPress experience anywhere. Uh, and I believe that as we all start to become guru level in JavaScript, uh, just like we've seen, is very, very possible. Um, learning new things is scary and hard, and it kind of sucks being a beginner again. But once you get over that hump, it becomes amazing. And as Nikolai said earlier, going from one to two things that you're really fluent in is very, very hard. But going from N to N plus one gets easier and easier the more that you learn. So it expands your mind in the way that you think about programming. And my hope is that WordPress can actually reverse the trend of these closed APIs. I really think we have a chance to do this. As WordPress starts to power more apps, things like StoryCorps. StoryCorps gets an open API just kind of for free by being out there. And more and more can. And we can do it. We're one of the few platforms out there where it can be open at every layer of the stack. The API can be open and have great terms of service or terms of use and the code can be open, and it's built on open source software like MySQL and PHP. So it's turtles all the way down, open source all the way down. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one homework assignment in closing, which I've never done in the state of Word before, and you might be able to predict it. <laughs> and it's to learn JavaScript, deeply. <laughs> In fact, I am going to commit to this myself. Uh, you will see at least one patch from me in JavaScript stuff by the time that 4.7 comes out. So <laughs> if I can do it, I mean, I'm a dumb CEO now. Like, <laughs> if I can learn JavaScript, every single one of you can. And I encourage everyone to really dive into it because it is the future of the web. Think how delicious barbecue is. That's how important JavaScript is. <laughs> uh, there's amazing resources online, too. Check out things like Code Academy. There's 
Coursera courses, there's great books, there's, uh, there's mentorships, there's meetups going on, there's lots of sessions on this in every WordCamp now. It's gonna be a lot more in the coming year. Take every opportunity to really beef up your JavaScript chops because it's what's going to allow WordPress to thrive for the next 13 years. You know, one of the things that's been amazing about WordPress is most software isn't this big or popular 13 years old. <laughs> it, typically, there's a wave that happens, but because we've gone, been able to adapt, been able to sort of ride the wave of everything that's happened in technology, we're not just, I mean, this is the biggest WordCamp ever in history. <laughs> and I think to continue to ride that wave, it's gonna be extremely important that both from the user point of view and from the developer point of view, that we really become as good in JavaScript as any other project out there in the world. Have you all liked this WordCamp so far? <laughs> do you want to do it again? <laughs> My final announcement for today is that we will be coming back to this very hall December 2nd through 4th. So we're announcing the days. Get on Expedia now. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia has been amazing, and I think it's really special that this 10th anniversary of WordCamp, this time when we're making probably one of the biggest changes in our history from a technological point of view, um, happens in the birthplace of this nation as well, and in a city with the Liberty Bell, with cheesesteaks, with... <laughs> uh, kudos again to the Philadelphia organizing team and everyone who's been involved with this, because you've really made all of us feel welcome. And I'm really looking forward to coming back next year. So that's all I got. Thank you very much. <laughs>
you know, Ludacris says, I'm filling up your CD changer. We can start to fill up your dock. <laughs> they could be the WordPress icon and a Woo icon and like a, a Yoast icon or whatever there is. And each of these could actually have purpose-built interfaces. I mean, this is the beauty of being API driven is we don't have to squeeze everything into the exact same interface. If you're a plugin that does real estate management or something really advanced like that, there might be something that doesn't look like the WordPress write page, which is the best way to create that. And I'll, we jumped through a lot of hoops for that now. Uh, one cool thing, uh, check out the Calypso code base. Like I said, it's on GitHub, it's completely open source. There's hundreds of open components there that are interface sort of chunks and modules that are completely reusable. So as people start to explore React and explore using React for your, uh, your JavaScript versions of your stuff, you, we can actually start to reuse those both as user interface patterns and as actual code that gets shared back and shared. So I'm pretty excited about if we go in that direction, what it could mean for WordPress as a whole. Cool. Thank you. To the right. Um, you said to learn JavaScript. Which framework, if any? <laughs> So Calypso is using React. Um, JavaScript is, but learn JavaScript. If you learn JavaScript, you learn React, you'll be able to use Ember, you'll be able to use Angular. Like, don't worry too much about the framework. Maybe start with the stuff that Calypso did. But yeah, the important thing is just to get really great with JavaScript and have some fun with it. You know, build the little to-do list app, or build the notes app, or build sort of the things that allow you to get your feet and think about what the expressiveness of JavaScript as a language, which is one of the most beautiful programming languages in the world, in my opinion. Again, this is server-side or JavaScript more than DOM stuff, um, can allow you to do. So check it out. So short answer, React. <laughs> <laughs> to the left. Hey, Matt, my name's Douglas Bell, and I was at the first WordCamp in 2006. It's wow. come a long way since then. Um, I'm now from DC. Uh, I wanted to ask about, you mentioned Calypso, and I've, I've petered around with the WordPress.com interface. I'll be honest, I still am used to and love the MP6 WP admin. Is there any anticipation of Calypso replacing the admin in the near future? Or is that gonna be like two separate strategies? Well, the beautiful thing is they're, they're separate right now, and they can co-develop and co-evolve. So the reality is today, there's 40,000 plugins and themes for WordPress. 40,000 plugins, a good chunk of which modify the admin, which works in WP Admin. And we've done a lot of improvements through MP6 and many, many other projects. The customizer, tons of things have been happening to improve WP Admin. The cool thing about Calypso, especially now that it's open source, it, get, it gives us a place where we can be a little more experimental. And in fact, I fully expect there to be Calypso forks and other people doing completely different ideas with it. But again, that we were able to do in 20 months what previously took kind of 13 years and move a lot faster. I think this coming year, we'll be able to do two or three turns on some of these core interfaces like widgets, menus, theme selection, just because it's so much faster and easier to develop in this way. And we've got this sort of brief period of time where we don't need to worry about anything else. Right? We don't need to worry about plugins or things modifying stuff. So this gives us, sometimes not having a ton of users is an incredible blessing. Um, we should take advantage of this to re-examine perhaps some of the core assumptions that the WordPress interface makes. And think about you know, if, if we become more user-centric rather than site-centric. Because right now the WordPress admin is very site-centric. What does it mean if perhaps in the future, maybe the WordPress, when you go to WordPress.org, you download two things. like a, client-side app that you run on your desktop or your phone or something like that, and then the server-side app that gets installed on your web host, and those talk to each other. That's actually kind of interesting, and perhaps we can look at differently what it means to like manage 10 WordPresses at once, or perhaps have an activity stream of everything going on across all your sites that allows you to dive in. This could be pretty cool. Enjoy. Have fun with 4.7. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's go to the middle. John Rahm from right here in Philly. Um, do you foresee JavaScript replacing PHP as the template hierarchy of choice? Because right now, I guess with JavaScript, it probably wouldn't support child themes. No, um, so JavaScript totally different from Java. So completely, don't buy a Java book. 
<laughs> JavaScript, obviously. Yes. Yeah, you'll go the wrong direction and you'll wonder what we're doing. <laughs> like, why on earth are they going this direction? So definitely get a JavaScript book. The script is very important. The cool thing is PHP is getting so much better. Like, it just doubled in performance. And it's actually the way that themes work and the way that the API part of WordPress works and the way WP Admin kind of works is actually really awesome. There's no reason we should run away from that. I think PHP is always going to be in the future of WordPress. And in fact, as a templating language, it's kind of one of the best out there. Now, people have started to do JavaScript-driven themes, uh, things like Picard. There's been a few others. Um, this could be interesting. One of the things that I think is going to happen with the API is we'll see lots and lots of different technologies on the front end be it for a business reason or for an integration reason or something like that, like at the New York Times or someplace else. Mashable, I think, runs like this. They might have a Node or Python or something else front end that's then talking to WordPress on the back end. It's actually something I'm a little worried about, because right now that 25% number that we see tick up every month is from people using WordPress on the front end. So actually something I think we should think about as a community is perhaps maybe standardizing on some sort of header like an HTTP header we can send. So even if your application doesn't run any PHP at all, it can send a header to say, hey, you know, business in front. It's like a mullet. Business in front, party in back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the header, X mullet colon WordPress. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that there's some WordPress back there that's doing some really cool stuff. And we can start to track that alongside tracking the parts where WordPress powers the entire front end. So I think those will happen in parallel. WordPress is an amazing front-end framework. And some of the largest sites, including WordPress.com, um, New Yorker, et cetera, like run WordPress on the front, too. But I think that, I mean, one of the things we're doing, one of the philosophies of WordPress is always to work with where people want to go. And we're hearing people saying that they want to use different technologies for some of this front-end stuff for whatever reason. We want to support that. I mean, that's the key to an open API. So PHP for themes for a while still, but some people on the side may be doing some more uh, progressive stuff. Thank you. To the right. Hi, Matt. It's Martin. Um, with 4.4, we are, for the first time, really wielding the power of WordPress uh, on the web by paving the cow paths of responsive images. And that's a really, really big deal. At this conference, we are seeing something that's pretty much new to the WordPress community, which is card captioning on all talks, a sign language interpreter in front. You can't really see from the back, but there's actually someone signing right there. Um, and WordPress core is becoming exceptionally accessible. Now, last year, I brought up this issue of themes and accessibility. At the time, we had 18 themes in the library that were accessible. Today, we have 79 out of some thousands, which is great, but there's a couple of thousand left to go. Now, we've made strong decisions about responsive images, which is great. And we have the power to change the web, because once we roll out responsive images, then everyone has to do, has to do it too. Can't we do the same with accessibility as well? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if that was a question, but yes. <laughs> so let me, let me make it into a question then. Can you? <laughs> Tell everyone in this room and our community to when they learn JavaScript, also add on that little extra accessibility part so that we all start building everything accessible and tell the world that the web should be accessible, and that's the WordPress way. I agree, and obviously that got applause. <laughs> but I disagree in a way as well. Um, I, I'm worried about getting to a point where we think of accessibility like a, a checkbox, even though there are great guidelines and things like that. I think that accessibility is a process. And it's going to be driven sometimes not by every single person, but by groups like the amazing accessibility group we have in WordPress. Um, and most importantly, by the people who need the technology 
communicating and us observing that and things like that. So I do think that, you know, that we have presentations on accessibility at every single work camp. We have now the guidelines online. I think we're a little behind on the theme reviews, which is part of the reason the number hasn't grown as much, but because accessibility reviews are much harder than even a normal theme review, which is already hard. But uh, I'm really excited about what this group's been able to do and the growing sort of momentum in the WordPress world. Uh, that said, I don't think that necessarily just saying like everyone should be accessible will actually move things as much as the continuing education and that we're doing through every single WordCamp, through the guidelines, through the theme reviews, through the group. So that's why I highlighted it in the state of the word, you know, saying, talking about how we've doubled the accessibility tickets over the past year. Um, we also also need to think about accessibility in a global sense, which is the 6.99 billion people who haven't used WordPress yet, and many of whom who can't. So I also think about accessibility in terms of languages, in terms of mobile devices and touch devices. These are things that as we get there, what we do right can then expand to a much, much larger audience. So I encourage everyone to keep all of that in mind, but learn JavaScript as well. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Matt. My name is Travis Taylor. Um, as a plug-in author, is there anything that we need to do to prepare for the translation? Uh, commit and update. <laughs> That will bring your strings into translate.wordpress.org. And one thing that I think has been pretty effective with some different plugins is um, you know, reach out to your community and people using it. Uh, probably, if, if we think about it, because most plugins are really primarily in English, if you have users in other countries, they probably are bilingual. And so if you can reach out to them and work with them to get them to submit translations or maybe even become moderators for your plugin, um, it can increase it. So use your pulpit, use your platform, be it that through the, in the interface of the plugin, your blog, your everything, the, the plugin page. Try to bring as many people in the translation process as possible. Thank you. Thank you. I like it. <laughs> Middle, yeah. Oh. Hey, Matt. Hi. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, LA area. Uh, so I have a question. It's not technical, but it's kind of messing with me. So a couple years ago, you came out, you did a talk uh, in WordCamp San Diego. Your hair was a little unruly, all over the place like a great lion's mane. And I was like, dude, when are you going to cut your hair? And uh, you, you gave us a good story about what, what the story of your hair was and how you met the president and all that. So it, your, your hair is looking a little bit lighter, and I want to know what was going on with that. And if you're stressed <laughs> out, you know, you can tell us about it. But you know, what's, what's going on? What's going on? That's, that's all I got. <laughs> you know, my mom asked the same questions. <laughs> she doesn't know what's going on either. Yeah, the, um, the joke, you know, I became CEO last year of Automatic. The job really ages you. It's like being president. But um, yeah, I mean, one of the beautiful things is that uh, in a lot of the companies being built around WordPress, you could look like whatever you want. You could be whatever you want. We've got a sticker up here, you know? There is, I think it's beautiful that the, the inclusion and the feel of the WordPress community is now starting to be translated into dozens and dozens of the companies built on top of it. And that, I think, is probably one of the things that, I mean, part of the idea behind doing WordPress and Automatic the way they were was to show the world that companies could be built in a different way, that it wasn't a company profiting at the expense of an open source or an open source thing becoming so big and in realty, it becomes unresponsive to its users in the wider, the broadening, changing environment as many projects kind of end up collapsing under their own weight. And now, if you look at any of those sponsors on there, all the companies in the WordPress ecosystem, many of them are distributed, they're inclusive, they allow people to have crazy hair. I think that's awesome. So to all of you out there building businesses, employing people, or at these companies, thank you very much for bringing a little bit of the WordPress magic into that, because I think we can change business just like we've changed the web. Thank you. Nice shirt, by the way. Thanks. Uh, I got it from this awesome booth downstairs. My name's Mika. I work in California, and I have a very, I, I guess, unique and apparently prolific relationship with plugins and plugin developers, uh, fairly <laughs> different from most people. I do the a lot of the plugin reviews on .org, and one of the things I've been hearing from plugin developers recently, and also people who support 
plugins and WordPress is that the constant stream of WordPress major releases has started to put a drain on resources. And this is from people who are individuals who don't have the depth of resources that WordPress does when it comes to testing beta versions of their plugins or even just supporting people when they do a major upgrade. And while I am an advocate for the rapid release cycles of WordPress, I do start to wonder if updating four times a year, which is what we will be doing this year, is perhaps a little bit too fast to allow our developers to keep up with a changing ecosystem, to learn JavaScript, to learn the REST API, and all of the things that are moving so quickly. Are we perhaps moving just a little too fast, and maybe we should turn it down by one? <laughs> and Mika was very modest there. She's part of the team that reviews those 9,000 plugins that we added this year. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I quite enjoy it. <laughs> I'm glad you do. <laughs> um, it's funny, because at every, every time society starts moving faster, everyone thinks it's the end of society. Like, when trains were first there, people were like, human bodies were not meant to go this fast. <laughs> Which is actually kind of a reasonable thing to think about when you think about it. Like, <laughs> In all of past, you know, million years, human bodies have moved like up to maybe the speed of a horse, and now we're taking it faster than that. So what happens? Um, I think that this is this is our train. <laughs> I think I called it a release train earlier. Like three releases a year seems fast, and is that too fast for software developers? Can they keep up? Um, I think well, one thing we can do is as we do these major updates, you know, be more proactive by improving the plugin directory so that users and can share the burden of some of the testing and perhaps even some of the updating, you know, making plugins so they're less, you know, I don't think any plugin should be a one-person shop. It's best when there's many people involved. Just like if you look at everything that's doing super well in WordPress, including the plugin review team, it's a team. And the best plugins, part of the reason that we do the core plugins process is to provide the best practices for how plugins can work together and people can work together to develop things in the plugins. So, yeah, I think we can improve those tools, but I think we're probably going to get faster, not slower. The four releases this year as an aberration just kind of worked out that way scheduling-wise. So three is still our target and in a given calendar year, and we'll probably maintain that for how it is going forward with the current update technologies. But, you know, we're not that far. A lot of hosts already enable the flag that has WordPress, including DreamHost, I believe, in the flag that has WordPress do its own major updates. And we're getting to the point where we now have half the sites in the world on the latest major one. I think of it almost from the other direction, that what plugin authors will be able to do with things like the REST API being on half the WordPress sites in the world, maybe we can even get that higher, 60, 70, 80%. Um, that enables them to build so much more interesting and expressive experiences that perhaps lower their maintenance burden or lower their support burden. Uh, by the things that we're putting into WordPress core. And that's really the point of what we do in core versus doing plugins, is things that make the entire WordPress ecosystem better. So it'll probably get faster, not slower. And I'm sorry to everyone who feels like it's too fast, but um, it's worked so far. Thank you. Hi, Matt. Uh, I'm Kite from Japan, and I'm a core contributor. From and Japan, that's further yes. than the other places. Yes. <laughs> uh, I have a question that, uh, so what's the easiest way to become a lead developer? <laughs> easiest way to become a lead developer? Yeah. <laughs> They'll be mad at me for saying this, but basically annoy, annoy the existing lead developer so much with your amazing patches and contributions that they're just like, this is how Nason got in. Ryan was just like, shut up already. <laughs> Commit it. <laughs> okay. So, you know, get active. And they're, you know, we're adding, we're opening up development quite a bit. Uh, we're adding total, I think, 13 committers this year, which is more than WordPress had its like first five years <laughs> in total. We added it just this year. So I think we're moving to a point. Uh, where commit becomes as much an expression of trust. So as you build up to the trust through working alongside on track tickets and things like that with the existing developers, then that becomes something that levels up. And um, 
And I hope to see more and more folks doing that in the future, because what I think is a possibility for WordPress development to actually have uh, more leads within it. So people who, like Weston with a customizer, for example, that really dive deep, uh, Ella and uh, Oz with uh, WYSIWYG, that really get deep on a particular section of WordPress and just continually improve it every single release. And that can have some really great, uh, really great sort of returns. Also, I'll give you the advice that, because sometimes people at Automatic or professionally are like, well, how do I, how do I move up? Um, Another good thing is to do the thing that no one else wants to do. <laughs> so by doing the thing that no one else wants to do, people are very happy to delegate to you. <laughs> and then you can kind of show awesomeness with that thing, and then that can expand. So find a thing that literally no other developer wants to do and become awesome at it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, and I'm looking you. forward to seeing you on the screen in a couple of years. <laughs> Hi, Matt. My name is Matt Cromwell from uh, San Diego. And, uh, we have a lot of Matts here today. If you're Matt, raise your hands. Not bad, not bad. It's hard to be a Matt in your shadow, honestly. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited about um, the new uh, default 2016 theme. It's uh, really gorgeous. And um, uh, I got to contribute a little bit to it, mostly because it was on Git. So I would love to hear your insight on when uh, WordPress development will all be on Git. I think that, you know, I'll go old school here for a moment. There was a time when we switched from CVS to SVN. And that was a, there were people who were unhappy with that. And we had to redo a lot of our tools and everything like that. I think that, over the coming months, and some of it happened at the contributor days, uh, we're figuring out how to integrate Git and GitHub more into our flows, uh, because we do have a lot of tools and things built. So I would love for a point where, in the future, and I think we talked about this last year, that pull requests and things could actually be part of the flow into our issue tracker, which is track. Um, for now, putting core plugins and things like 2016 on the GitHub is a cool way to do sort of a mini version of that. And I love that it brings in new contributors, like yourself, especially if they're named Matt. <laughs> but we do have some stuff to figure out there, and I don't want to prematurely pre-announce anything. So I would say keep an eye on like the WordPress.org news blog or the make blogs for anything official there. Um, but know that it is something that we're fans of. Calypso is also 100% on GitHub. So if there's lots of projects you can get involved with, 2016, Calypso, lots of the feature plugins that are happening there. So if that's more your style or your speed, um, there's ways to contribute, and hopefully more core in the future. All right, thank you. Yep. <laughs> hey, my name is Scott. I'm from Phoenix. I like to call it the other pho here in Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> So a lot of us filled out a survey, and I believe the results were going to be told over this WordCamp. So I just wanted to check in on that and see kind of the results of that survey. Oh, the big, the yeah. big survey. The big the survey. One, the one that was in the header for yeah. like, oh, yeah, usually I go over a lot of those results. Um, it was just too many numbers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some highlights, and maybe we'll do a blog post on it. Like, it's kind of the trends that we've been talking about the past few years. More and more people are using WordPress as a blog and CMS. App development is growing. Uh, a cool one is I think we had over 9,200 people who took the survey who said they make their living full time from WordPress, which is like, a, I think, a 30% growth from last year. So there were some cool trends, but it was all kind of the same things that happened in previous years. So I didn't highlight too much of it uh, because, you know, I try to switch it up for y'all. Yeah. Thank you. Blue tie or purple tie, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we'll try to do a blog post on that. Yeah. Cool. And thanks for asking. Thank you. And let's write down that we'll do a blog post. <laughs> to the left. Hello, oh, I'm Hidetaka. I come from Japan. And I have a question. And will you use the WP REST API on WordPress.org and WordCamp.org? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Now, now we I can use uh, WP and WordPress dot, WordCamp dot org using getting the post uh, using the REST API. 
Oops. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I entirely understand. So we'll have, uh, especially now that it's going to core, I think, well, we've done some cool things to boost the plugin. Like you can now have themes that rely on the REST API. And we will be deploying all this stuff to WordPress.com, to WordPress.org, and WordCamp. Uh, the only other API thing that is coming that we can talk about because it's almost done is um, we're going to have WordPress.org be an OAuth provider, actually. So announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that'll make some of our different apps uh, be able to connect better and easier. That answer the question? Yeah? OK. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, check out for OAuth coming to WordPress.org near you. To the right. All right. Hi, I'm Jason from Vermont. I make Postmatic. Uh, as WordPress grows beyond 25%, and with the REST API, the uh, amount of interesting things that we could do with WordPress grows as well. Uh, increasingly, WordPress is going to be touching many more parts of the global economy in a, in a real way. Uh, and there's a really big potential ecosystem there. Given that, developing and maintaining captivating plugins is becoming very expensive. And do you see any modifications uh, to the .org re repo in regard to tools for businesses or policy changes to make a more freemium or premium plugin uh, ecosystem uh, more avail available? Not so much. <laughs> uh, so, and what was your position on where freemium plugins should be? So I think it can be a bad user experience when everything you search for or click on, all the best looking stuff in the directories, be that the theme or the plugin directory, are kind of gotchas. You know, they have sort of a free light version that maybe does some of what they said they did, or, but eventually are just driving you to a paid version. So I think that's the thing we just need to be really cognizant of that perhaps doing something to promote paid plugins there could help some of those plugins in the short term. But I think it would be at the long-term detriment of the WordPress ecosystem to, to have those. Because we can see sort of a parallel universe example of this in the Joomla world, where they went pretty hardcore and they paid everything. And the sort of dynamics that that created in their community ended up being pretty corrosive. And people stopped working together as much. They all wanted to make their own sort of paid thing. Uh, users felt like they were being nickel and dimed for every single functionality. Core development for them became a lot lighter because all of a sudden people contributing development wanted to put their thing into their plugin that they charged for, not into core. So I think that very much the WordPress.org community and WordPress as a system is still going to be oriented towards the collaborative nature. It's when we come together, like the Wikipedia or like WordPress itself, people building things to be open and free for the world, because that's how we realize our mission of democratizing publishing. And businesses will figure out how to make money around that. But it's not something that we want to super create like in a marketplace or something like on WordPress.org. Thank you. All right, last couple. We're running out of time. Hello, uh, uh, my name is Jackie, and I just wanted to thank you for that. Uh, so uh, aside, in addition to the code, uh, the community obviously is such a core component of WordPress. And uh, last year you mentioned, uh, what is it, 5% for the future, or 5 for the future? People give back 5% of things uh, back to WordPress. And I'm curious what you've seen uh, in response to that this past year, um, and what you'd like to see this coming year? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I've seen almost every organization start to really ramp up their contributions. We're seeing more people employed full time, uh, from agencies, from web hosts, et cetera, to contribute back to WordPress. And so that's been good. I don't know if, have we reached 5% yet? Um, even Automatic is not at 5% yet, even though we contribute back a lot. So it's a process, and I'd say for more examples, I'd like to get back to you. So keep an eye on either the WordPress.org blog or MA.TT, because this is something I want to highlight a lot more. And if you're in the audience or if you are watching online and you are doing something really cool giving back to the WordPress community, please reach out, because actually this is some place where I would like to have something on WordPress.org, almost like a page that allows people to sort of say their level of commitment and sign something that says this is what we're giving back and then we can highlight them and link to them. Because I think that that ultimately creates a really long-term sustainable model for 
for the WordPress community. All right? And this will be the very last one, so I hope it's uh, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure at all. <laughs> Given the release of PHP 7 and how you made mention of a willingness to sacrifice a bit of backwards compatibility if what's being gained is big enough, WordPress presently, the minimum requirement for PHP is 5.2, but it does recommend 5.5. Mm -hmm. uh, when can we expect a minimum requirement to be uh, bumped up a bit Given the, rel uh, given the age of, like, say, PHP 5.2 or similar versions? So the thing that we learned is that if we changed our minimum requirement, it's not driving. The assumption there is if we changed it, it would drive more people to switch. But what would actually happen is I feel like we would leave a lot of people behind. If you look at it, a lot of folks, uh, what's really driving this is the web host, not necessarily people individually choosing to use these older versions of PHP. So what we've been doing is a lot of outreach, a lot of encouragement. And so as far as I know, all the major web hosts currently have programs underway, all the ones that are big in WordPress world, to start to upgrade more of their PHPs. And that's probably not going to PHP 7 yet, but they're getting to the 5.5s and the 5.6s of the world. And we're seeing some pretty significant swings in the usage. Now, as we track that, you know, maybe there's just still 5% that's on, or 3% on 5.2, but that's still millions of websites. And one key, if you go to Nathan's presentation or watch it online later, you'll see that whenever we can, we try to do as much as possible to protect every website. This is why we sometimes backdate security updates all the way back to 3.7, which again is far behind what we officially support for WordPress. But if we have the ability to protect the sites, we do. And that's kind of our, our sense. So when I think about breaking backwards compatibility, it's not leaving behind millions of users because they're not able to upgrade their version of PHP because they have no control over their server. It's about perhaps providing a new way, specifically what I was talking about, providing a new interface or way of developing that enables the next generation of applications to be built. And to be honest, there's nothing in P PHP 7 has a major performance increase, but there's not a ton in there that would allow us to develop a significantly different user experience. Where, whereas, <laughs> the switch to JavaScript actually enables us to build interfaces which are sometimes 10 times as fast as what they're replacing. So, and much more fluid and much more ability to be iterated. So I think that that is how we have to think about it. And regardless of what decisions we make, and again, anything we'll do, we do will be over the next couple of years, we still have this incredible reverence for the user, not wanting to break user trust, and thinking about the importance of what backwards compatibility has allowed us to become the most dominant CMS on the web right now. You know, with 25% of the web, we're actually like 58% of all CMSs in terms of market share. So as we bring, bring more of these people on, we want to get to a place where we can tell them you're on the latest and greatest and it's update and we can work with your host to find it. So one of the things we're gonna be doing is try to identify, because we get these update pings, so we're gonna be looking at who are the, what's the wall of shame for PHP? <laughs> and reaching out privately at first, maybe publicly in the future, to really encourage these web hosts to get their clients, because it's really in their hands, it's not in the client's hands, to get as many of them on the latest versions of PHP as possible. And so I absolutely believe there'll be a time when we drop it, but it won't be us dropping it to try to change things, it'll be us dropping it because things have changed. And that's where we can really use our position and power in the web world, is to really work with the web hosts and things to show them what's great around the corner. I think PHP 7 will really help this because it does have uh, some really cool performance improvements. And we are out of time, so I want to thank both you and everyone else for coming and making this the coolest WordCamp I've ever been to. Thank you. <laughs>